Welcome to Map It Marketing, for small business owners who want to become more confident and capable in their marketing. I'm Rachel Claver, and I'm a small business owner, just like you. I've learned that there are so many different things that we are supposed to do all the time. And trying to work it all out is, quite frankly, often very confusing. In this podcast, we're going to explore what those things are and whether you need to pay attention to them. Ready? Let's get started. Hello, today we are talking social media captions. I'm so pleased that you're here joining me with this. Um, This is our episode 16 of Map It Marketing, and I'm going to talk you through my tips and tricks and a bit of my structure for writing a great social media post, because I know it's something that a lot of people struggle with. Before we dive into that, however, I'd love to invite you to come along to our Facebook group called Map It Marketing 2. Everything's called Map It Marketing, makes it easy, where you can ask questions about this episode or anything else around marketing, and we'll help you. Uh, Let's get into this episode. So years ago, when I was a primary school teacher, I discovered that the thing I was worst teaching wasn't art, which I absolutely loved and had a huge passion for, but it was PE. Um, I couldn't work it out. I couldn't understand why the thing that I wasn't naturally good at was the thing I was so good at teaching young learners for. And it didn't make much sense. And then I realized that I was having to learn a few steps ahead of the children that I was teaching. And often I was maybe three or four steps ahead of them, but it meant that I was really good at teaching them as a beginner because I was learning as I went and documenting it and then helping remember the steps that it took. When we're fluent at stuff, it's much harder for us to teach. And it's something that I've really struggled with because content marketing and writing is my thing. It's the thing that I feel is easy to do as breathing. And so when clients have asked me, how do I do this particular thing? I've often really struggled to know exactly how to teach them how to write great content because it's something I just know how to do. Um, And I'd often just say, just write, you know, just write, go for it. And it's not very helpful and it would make my clients feel stressed out and frustrated. And so I challenged myself last year to start working out exactly what it was that I had to do to teach clients how to write a post. And part of that meant that I went back and started looking about how I was writing posts. And instead of like dissecting it, I actually rehashed it and worked through a process and a structure that meant that I could then use that to teach other people. And I used that by watching other people, posts that I was naturally engaging with, ones that I had done and they did on Instagram that people had really enjoyed. And I used that to create a structure. It is hard to write great content if you haven't often put a lot of sentences together. And let's you know, not even talk about the writer's block we get from fear of failure and all those sort of things. It's tricky. And so I now teach a structure that helps every small business owner write more engaging content. We use it with our clients. And I'd like to share it with you today because I feel like it's something that can really liberate you from writing average content that's not getting that engagement you need to much better contact content. Now, we still have to talk about marketing messages and all that sort of stuff, and this is not a podcast for that. But this structure helps you put a great marketing message into a structure that people are almost compelled to reply back to. And I think that's really important. It's one I now use almost by default, although like most people who become fluent in the thing, um, I'm often cutting corners. So please don't read mine and then go, hey, she missed out this section. Uh, That's what you do when you're fluent. So this is a going back to basic section for you. I'm so excited to share this with you today. Um, If you go to rachelclava.com slash podcast and you click on episode 16, you'll also be able to get a download of the worksheet that comes with this so you can plan out your first ones on paper. I need to plan stuff out on paper when I'm learning. So that's what I've given you. You don't need to give me your email address. It's just a gift from us. Um, and I'd love you to come into the Facebook group and then teach uh, tell me how you're going and share one of your posts once you've done it. All right, let's get into learning. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about the favorite sort of content I have on social media. These are the things that give you a lot of engagement. And we're going to talk mainly across Facebook, Instagram, and um, LinkedIn, because the other types and formats are video rich, and the content is in the video, and, and doing video is quite different to writing content. It's similar, you need a hook and those sort of things, but you've got a bit more space, and you can be a bit more wordy in a caption. And so I want you to remember that this is very much about the written side of social media, and we'll cover video and how to script a great video in a later podcast at some point. 
So here's some of my favorite content. So the first thing is I love um, checklists. I love lists of tips and ideas. It's my probably my best go-to because I tend to think in quite a structured way. Often I'm writing something that's quite bare and then I can go and fill it in with more stuff. When I'm writing columns, I've got my stuff column on stuff.co.nz every week. And often that's like a list because that's how I think. So that probably would be my default favorite. However, you can talk about your top products. You can make a list of the top products you want to sell or your core services. You could make a list of a whole lot of things. You could talk about yourself and your past and your experience and your validation for doing what you do. You could share an opinion. So you could share a bunch of opinions, if they're unpopular opinions or or confrontational opinions or things that people might not agree with. Um, they're there. Now, just be prepared if you're going to do that, you will get people who won't agree. That's the whole point of sharing an opinion. So I purposely don't do a lot of opinion sharing um, around politics, COVID, uh, vaccines, all that sort of stuff. I don't share my opinions. Um, I will if someone asks me, um, but I won't tend to share those on my marketing uh, Instagram page because I feel like it takes away from what I've got. But maybe there'll come a day where I will, you know, if there was something that came against um, massive things around my belief system, then perhaps I would have, I was challenged on it, I would. Um, And then sharing a lesson from your business. So I have had a lot of learning. You guys have heard some of that on my podcast before. You know, if you haven't listened to it before, I think it's episode two or three goes through exactly all the mistakes we made um, originally when we started Identify. So sharing lessons is a really powerful thing, or you can answer frequently asked questions. And that's one of the ones I'm going to recommend you use this for first to get used to the practice of it, because it's quite a good one. All right. The next thing I was going to talk before we jump into the structure is Words are really important. And if you're not a great wordy person and you don't know, you have a great vocabulary, I really encourage you to fall a little bit in love with a thing called a thesaurus. Use a thesaurus, and I'll I'll link one in the show notes. Um, I'll just make a note that I'm going to do that. Um, I'll link you to a a, a thesaurus. I can't say the word thesaurus um, in the show notes that you can use where I'd like you to go into your niche. So say your niche is... um, Cooking. Um, you could go and put cooking in, in the search terms and it'll come up with a whole lot of other ways like hit the gas or like or heat up the gas or flash fry or whatever it is. And then you go and create a whole list of words that you can use that are a bit more interesting than cooking. Or for marketing, it could be place with crayons or something like that. And create a list of those terms that you could use in a post to make them more interesting and stand out from your competitors. I know that for some of you, you'll know that I say things like, you know, you never killed a man with your face, uh, be a goat in a tree, build a web, be a spider, be a spider, build a web, um, be an iceberg. And those are my phrases that I use and pepper through my own language. And that helps people work out that this is a Rachel Claver or an identify marketing caption. So have a little look, write some ideas down, make a document of them, print them out. And so when you've got, when you're writing your social media captions and you're struggling for words, you can use some of those words in your marketing, uh, which is really important. All right. So let's get into this. Let's go through and work out how to write a great caption. So we've got five sections. I just had to count them up. I've got an issue with five. Boy, I tell you, going back to teaching, I once had to teach a six-year-old the concept of five, and that was really hard. (laughs) Okay, so um, we're going to talk about five sections. So I've got um, the, the workshop we've got is broken into the five sections so you can walk them through. But every caption needs a great headline because you've got to think that people are scrolling through and yes, they'll notice the picture and stuff like that, but they'll stay for the caption and the caption, the headline is the bit that they see most. You can use it in caps. You don't have to. Like if everything's caps, it can feel a bit shouty, but you have to think about it as all capital letters. So even if you don't write it in capital letters, think about it as capital letters. Like this is the attention grabbing thing you're going to say. It can be a question. It can be a statement. I like to use numbers in it, like the four best things you could do to help your marketing today. Here's five sales tips to help convert your sales. Here's two things that you might not be doing. The one thing you should be doing. I personally like using numbers because I'm a attracted to numbers that way. Um, But you could also have the most important thing that you've got to do today. So using uh, what are called superlatives or using um, definite words to help make that really bold statement is really important. Here's here's something that you never thought, I never thought I would tell anyone. Something that makes it really interesting. And we're going to do a couple of examples of this, but that headline needs to be eye-catching that your target market is going to want to use. And make sure you're using the language that people want to use. So for example, I was watching someone um, and her target market is women in New Zealand. 
And she was using the phrase mamas. Well, we don't tend to call ourselves mamas in New Zealand. We're mums. We're definitely not moms. Um, and so it's making sure that we use the right language that really attracts the people we're talking to as opposed to somebody else. Um, so we've got the headline. So number one is the headline. Number two, you've got to hook them in. And by hooking them in, what we want to do is we want to get that statement. So like the three best things about social media right now. And then you go summarize that this is important. You need to know this information so that you can improve your marketing today. Something that hooks them in, that brings it, summarizes what they're going to, why they need to read the, the information and what result they're going to get from it. So we've got our headline. So like 50 things that I've worked out from turning 50. I'm about to turn 50. By the time this airs, I'll already be an old 50-year-old woman, which is terrible. Um, and so, no, it's not terrible. Um, and so we've got this headline. So like 50 things I wish I'd known before I was 50. And which would be weird, or 50 things I'm glad I knew by the time I was 50. Let's do that one. And then the hook might be something like, here's what you need to learn from my mistakes if you're not, not here yet. So it's something that pulls people in and makes people really think about what they're doing. Now, by the way, I am riffing this. I haven't written this down. I do have a little cheat sheet later on. Um, so if these aren't like amazing, I'm just truly just coming out of my head. Then you'd need to do the juicy content. You need to give the actual content of the post, why people are doing that. So obviously 50 is going to be a tricky thing for me to do. Bad idea, the 50 idea. But say we did five sales tips you need to have. So it might be like the five sales techniques that you might not be using to close that sale. And then the hook might be, you need this content before you jump into your next sales meeting or something like that. Or this is the stuff you need for your next sales meeting. And the juicy content will be one, two, three, four, five, the top tips. Or it could be um, just a bunch of advice, general advice or information. It could be a story. Um, I did a LinkedIn post today about a story about something happened to me 18 years ago. And my first sentence was, buckle up, guys. This story is going to keep you wanting for more. And it immediately tracks people's eyes. And then I put a little thing on. Here was my little thing around why it was going to be really important. And then there was a story. And then there was a bit at the end. So use a headline hook them in with a summary, and then give them the juicy content, the actual information that you want them to have. Um, so you could use points, you could use tips, advice, you could have paragraphs or a numbered list. Doesn't matter, that's where it fits. Then from that, you need to move to a link between that and our call to action, which is number five. So we've got our headline to draw attention. Then we've got the hook, summarizing why they need to have that information. Then you've got the juicy content, which is all the information you're wanting to give them. Then we have a link from that juicy content and it needs to move it. So it'd be like, so say if I had five sales tips and I said something like, always make sure you turn up to the meeting on time, always make sure you're prepared, always make sure that you ask open-ended questions, always make sure that you um, that you um, offer them like a what happens next and always make sure that you give them an opportunity to close the sale. So that might be my five tips. And then from those five tips, I might have something like um, sales can be something that's very confronting to many business owners. So I've put something quite soft that summarizes those things, but leads them to somewhere. And then at the end, the call to action would be something like, um, if you know you need help with sales and marketing um, for your small business, um, give me a reply in the DMs or click my bio to get a free download or register for the webinar, a call to action of something there, or it could be, tell me your fix. So it could be like sales and marketing um, can be quite confronting for a lot of small business owners. If you would like to give us a tip today of something that you found useful, that would be useful. So whatever that call to action is, it can be to get more engagement, it can be to register for something free, download something, a new lead generation, joining a group, um, DMing you, uh, filling something out, filling out a contact form, whatever that call to action is, there must always be some sort of call to action in that post. So we'll go through those five again. One, you need a headline. Two, you need to hook them in. Three, you need the juicy content. Four, you need a link from the juicy content to number five, the call to action. Now let's try these with a couple of live examples. So I've actually written a couple here. So this is for the for service-based products. So we'll start with the headline. I'm going to read these out and I wonder if you can see them. We'll break them down in a second. So the best idea, advice I have ever been given is this. No matter what you do, no, not everyone will like you. So you may as well just be yourself. Here's how to show up for yourself more. Define who you are. Unfollow, ignore people who don't like you. Enjoy positive feedback. 
invest in an empowering photo shoot. Sometimes it takes a little help from someone like me. So if you know you need this, message me if you'd like to get started. So let's just break this down. The best advice I've ever been I've ever given is this. That's the headline. The hook, no matter what you do, not everyone will like you. So you might as well just be yourself. The juicy content, here's how to show up as yourself more. Define who you are, unfollow people who don't get you, enjoy positive feedback, and invest in an empowering photo shoot. Link, sometimes it takes a little extra from someone like me. You know you need this, so that's that kind of softness. And then call to action, message me if you'd like to get started. So that's how you could do it for services. Now let's try it with a product-based business. So here's one here. Um, headline, hook, juicy content, link, call to action. My favorite thing about winter is definitely cardigans. It's official. It is getting colder. And so now is the perfect time to layer up. Here's why I love cardigans. And some easy layers can pop it in a bag, can add a pop of color, can wear open or buttoned up. That's why I'm so excited that our new season's cardigans are in store now. Check them out. Just click the image to shop. Right, let's go back and have a look at this headline. My favorite thing about winter is definitely cardigans. Hook, it's official. It's getting colder. So now is the perfect time to layer up. Juicy content. Here's why I love cardigans. Instant easy layers. Can pop in a bag. Can wear a pop of color. Can we are open or buttoned up? Now I'm critiquing because I've realized that there's two pops here, which is irritating me. And Link, that's why I'm so excited about our new cardigans in store now. Call to action, check them out. Just check on the image, click on the image to shop. So that, again, for a, for a product-based business, you could use that in any way. We've used this with product-based businesses where you can say, my favorite thing, or here's one thing you didn't know, or here's three things you need to know. There's a whole lot of different ways that you can open that up, but have it more detailed instead of just check out this really cool fry pan or check out this beautiful top that we just got in. Or you could do, here's three things you didn't know about this designer. Um, lots of things that can just make it interesting and helpful. It's really important that we use those captions to encourage people to be engaged with us. The more we get engaging content in our social media, the more, if you're running ads, the cost of the ads going down. It also means the more engagement you get. So you're building that tribe and people that are regularly talking to you, which is really good for you. And it helps people to see that you're not just there to slam sales in their faces all the time. So it helps build that level of trust. Now, and when we're walking through and we're doing our captions, it is around how we're going to use and where we put these. So I would definitely use this form of captions on Instagram. I would definitely use this form of captions on LinkedIn. I would sometimes, not all the time, use them on Facebook. Sometimes Facebook actually likes quite short posts as well, but you can use some of the ideas around the headlines around in this. And you can try and use some of this stuff in videos if you want to by sharing it. If you're doing a reel, you can use this as the caption underneath a reel. Um, and if you're doing short form videos without that option, you can also use them. You can also use this as a way of planning out a blog because those little points in there can be filled out. So this is actually a great way of creating a content structure to help you with your writing better. Now, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. It's quite a short podcast today. It's just us walking through it. But I really want you to take action from today. So I've got a challenge for you. Uh, but first, please do remember to download the uh, worksheet at rachelclava.com slash podcast. And if you've got questions from today, join our Facebook group, Map It Marketing, and we'll get them answered for you, especially if you want to try some of the stuff in here and you've got questions around how to do that or get ideas, then we can do that in there. I'd also love it if you could rate and review this podcast so other business owners can find it and they can trust it and they can have a listen too. Um, I do think this one has got a power, even though it's short, this episode, it's a very powerful content for you to be able to go and actually write your content. And I'd love to see some of those results. So please tag me in at Identify Marketing or at Rachel Clava if you're on Instagram or the other platforms are on and so I can see what you're doing so I can give you a bit of a cheer because that would, that would make me pretty happy. So here's your action for today. Take one pillar of content, so like frequently asked questions or all your common services or your core products, and write them down. And then I want you to write a bunch of captions that you could use with them, one for each one. It's easier and it's better for learning for you if you try and write three or four at once because it helps you get into the groove. The first one's always the hardest. The second's a bit easier. Normally, the third or the fourth are starting to feel quite good. 
Um, and then I would love you to schedule those babies into your social media calendar and into your content. And then keep on doing this, keep on practicing and getting better. Nothing feels good the first time you ever do them. But as you do it more and more, it'll become more natural and you'll feel more confident with it. Next week, we're talking content marketing again, but next week we're talking to Lizzie Davidson. She is an amazing content writer and she's got a special strength in writing case studies. So if you're a product-based business, this might not apply to you so much, but there's real learning and how to create content within it that you'll still find useful. But for those of you that have got a service-based business, this is a must listen. Case studies are an essential part of a service-based business marketing. Uh, we're going to talk about what you need to have in them, what case studies are for, and how to use those things. Now, Lizzie did actually say that, because um, I've done the interview already, that you should tattoo them on your ass. I don't know if you need to go that far, um, but we are going to talk about how you can use them in your marketing. And remember to follow this podcast so you can get notified when that episode and future episodes are live. And besides that, have a great week. I hope you have a beautiful week, and I'll talk to you next week. for tuning in today to Map It Marketing with me, Rachel Claver. Make sure you hit subscribe in your podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you want notes or information about today's podcast, go to rachelclaver.com slash podcast for more information.